Cindy Barrier is a French professional artist and teacher who specializes in animal portraits. Proficient in watercolor, soft pastels, and gouache, Cindy also uploads weekly YouTube videos filled with useful art tips to help you improve your craft. But how does she find the time for everything? Join us today as we talk about going from hobbyist to professional artist, how to trick yourself into creating more, even when you feel like you can't, and Cindy's secret to drawing in your sketchbook every single day. Hi, I'm Anya, and this is Make More Art, a podcast by Etcher, meant to inspire you to keep on creating. Now let's hear from our guest. I am a professional since um, 2011. Mm -hmm. um, I started by uh, doing pet portraits. Um, I was uh, taking photographs of the pets of my customers and um, I was drawing the portrait and then I was sending it by uh, mail. Mm -hmm. So that was my full-time job until 2015, I think. Then I started to, to do videos for YouTube and I started to create online courses. So I had the, both activities, the, the portraits and the courses. Wow. And uh, it's uh, pretty much what I do right now. <laughs> when did the switch happen that just you realized it clicked for you that you wanted to do art for a living? I think it was when I was doing a, a business school. I was maybe 19, something mm. like that. I think it was a mistake. <laughs> uh, it was clearly not for me. I, I didn't fit in that school and I was feeling very depressed at the time. And um, drawing just came back to my life because um, as a, a, ch a child, I was drawing, of course, like almost every child, I think. And um, then I, I stopped for a few years. Uh, when I was a teenager, I was doing a few drawings, but just from time to time, mm -hmm. like a hobby. But then when I was in that school, I felt wrong. Uh, I needed to have something else in my life. Mm -hmm. And I think this is when uh, drawing took so much space for me. You just started practicing from scratch again? Yeah, exactly. Because I figured that the more I was drawing the less I was thinking of um, all the other stuff that I didn't like in my life. So I think this is why it's developed so much at this period of my life. Did you finish your business uh, degree? Oh, yeah, actually, I did finish it because <laughs> it was a very expensive school <sighs> and uh, I took the decision of doing it and I couldn't I just couldn't tell my parents, oh, I just changed my mind, so sorry <laughs> for your money. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, I, I thought I would finish it and then maybe I would have a, a normal job. <laughs> I mean, like uh, doing marketing or something and I would just draw for my own pleasure. Mm -hmm. But it didn't turn out this way. Actually, I, I, I figured that I could actually live from my portraits. So... At this point, I chose the, the artist way. <laughs> when you started doing portraits, mm -hmm. I'm assuming that what you were learning in business school helped you make the shift towards marketing yourself as an artist and getting those clients, right? Mm, yeah, everybody thinks that, but um, I'm not so sure, actually, because what I was learning was very... Um, like historical marketing. Yeah. I think what I learned uh, wasn't actually used anymore in any company. It was very um, theoretical. Mm. So um, I think what helped me the most was the, um, the training that I had to do at the end of my studies. It was, um, I, I could choose the company, so I, I chose a, a web marketing department and uh, this is where I really, really learned. But it was only uh, uh, maybe two years after I was actually painting on a very regular basis. So. And how did you make the shift between, like, how did that 
shift happen for you? How did you start charging for the pet portraits? Uh, first, I started to upload my work on the internet. Um, uh, at this time, it wasn't Facebook already. It was more the forums mm -hmm. on the internet. So I wanted first to show what I was doing and see a little bit uh, how people was reacting. Mm -hmm. But back then it was... Um, Uh, before 2011, so uh, there was not many uh, pet portrait artists on the internet. It was quite new for people, so mm -hmm. I was getting a lot of attraction, even if my work wasn't uh, very, very good. Mm -hmm. So it was very encouraging for me. And I think um, at some point when people started to ask, uh, could you draw my, my own dog? Um, then I started to think about it and, and thinking that maybe this could be um, at least a little bit of money to cover my, my fees because I, I wasn't working at, at this time. So um, I think it was when I, 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 had, I started to have a, an audience, actually. It was um, wow. giving me courage. And also the, this training that I, I did at the end of my studies, my um, tutor, mm -hmm. he was very, very supportive. And he was uh, very passionate about uh, the internet. And uh, he, he gave me the, this idea. Wow. What was your biggest art struggle and how did you overcome it? Uh, my biggest art struggle, um, I think... It was a few years after I started to be a professional and to make pet portraits. Uh, at this time, it was a little bit complicated for me because my boyfriend, he was unemployed and uh, this was my only job. So I was under a lot of pressure to, to uh, earn money with my, my job. So I was taking a lot of commissions And I was painting from seven in the morning to six in the evening, wow. uh, seven days per week. Oh my I was goodness. doing, yeah, I was doing only pet portrait commissions, and it was it was very hard because yes, it was what I loved doing, mm -hmm. but um, uh, it was also very tiring, and I felt that uh, if I had to keep this rhythm, I couldn't do that for very long. Oh my goodness. <laughs> At some point, uh, I just had to take more time for me. And this was difficult because I was feeling so guilty if I was uh, doing something else than working on my commissions. Mm. And uh, this is when the YouTube videos came to me. Uh, I started to, to focus on them. And very naturally, it encouraged me to draw things for me and not just for my customers. And this is when I decided to allow me uh, to draw other subjects uh, that I would have chosen. I think it's, it's very difficult when you, you cannot choose what you are painting. Mm -hmm. it's, um, you learn so much, but also you feel frustrated, I think. So you kind of tricked yourself in a sense to yeah. create whatever you wanted to and the excuse would be this will be for my YouTube channel so other people will benefit from it anyway and I pick whatever I want to do for it. I think I hadn't um, uh, made this analysis but it's very good. Yeah, I think it's exactly that. <laughs> wow. No, that's a really good, that's a really good uh, way to put it because um, at the time when I was at my previous job and I was also working long hours and I was struggling to make art for myself and I was trying to finish my children's book, I started uh, writing blog posts and the art for the blog posts would be whatever I was able to make for my own children's book. Mm -hmm. So I had an extra like, like, okay, if I make art for my children's book, I will encounter things to talk about and I will have art done to talk about those things. So oh, yeah. I'll have blog posts done about the book and I'll have the book done. So win-win. So <laughs> kind of kind of uh, tricking yourself to get stuff done in a way. Oh, Yeah, but it's uh, actually a very, very good idea. Hmm. Yeah, you're a genius. Okay, next. <laughs> <You> uh, <laughs> high five. <laughs> next question. What made you grow the most as an artist? 
Um, actually, several things made me grow as an artist. And the first was, of course, to become a professional because suddenly I wasn't drawing for me anymore. Uh, someone was waiting for the drawing and it had to be good. It had to worth their money. Mm -hmm. So this was uh, the first thing. Um, then it was when I started to keep a sketchbook. Uh, it was something that um, I, I had been really willing to make for years, but I wasn't make it because, of course, I was feeling guilty about it, mm -hmm. spending time on something else. But finally, after a few years, uh, I decided to do it. And uh, I became uh, very, very uh, interested in the, the, the sketchbook, just uh, drawing things from life, especially. Mm -hmm. And um, I started to draw every day something just for me just in my sketchbook. Aww. First, I wasn't even showing it anywhere. It was really my special moment, um, my special thing. And uh, after a few months, maybe I started to upload my drawings on my Instagram account. And uh, of course, when you upload sketches, I think it's difficult to get attention from um, an audience because I feel like on social media, the, the more um, detailed and realistic works are getting a lot of uh, the attention, mm -hmm. but it's, it's what I feel, actually. But uh, it didn't, um, it wasn't very important. Uh, I just wanted to inspire some people, even if it was just a few people, it was more than enough for me. So... Oh. Um, so yeah, that's, I think, um, the second thing really important for me to grow as an artist. Oh, that's beautiful. I would say that um, one of the most difficult things in learning how to draw uh, is to accept that you are making mistakes. And I think this is something that um, I struggle to accept in my beginnings. And I think that the more... Um, experimented and the more um, talented artists are the ones who are willing to accept their mistakes and to just draw something else. I think it's the best way to accept them actually is just, uh, okay, uh, I finished this drawing, maybe I'm not 100% satisfied, so now what am I going to draw next? Any advice for artists who are struggling to put their work out there for others to see? First of all, you don't have to put your work out there if this is not what you wish. And I think it's best to draw and um, and to wait maybe uh, some time before publishing your work to wait for you to, to feel good with what you do rather than um, not drawing at all because you are too worried about what other people would think. Um, this is something that I, I read a lot um, in the comments of my YouTube channel. Some, a lot of people actually, they are so uh, worried about um, the reactions of uh, other people to their work that they don't draw. And I think this is uh, such a shame. You should draw anyway. And if you don't like what you do, then don't publish it. And if you really like, then publish it. <laughs> Love it. Cindy allied her passion for animals with her art, building herself a solid career plan. What is your favorite art subject? And would you see yourself making a profit out of it or even a career? Let us know in the comment section of our post associated with this episode at etcherlab.com forward slash Cindy. That's E-T-C-H-R-L-A-B dot com forward slash C-I-N-D-Y like the podcast please help us by subscribing and giving us a five-star rating and review on apple podcasts at etterlab.com forward slash go forward slash apple until then let's make more art